So God called Abraham, yeah? When God called Abraham, Abraham was in a town called Haran. But that is not where Abraham was born. Amen. Abraham was born somewhere else. He was born in a town called Ur of the Chaldees. He did not spend his formative years in Haran. He spent it in Ur of the Chaldees. Amen. Now, like Haran, Ur was a very advanced city. Yeah? And it was believed to have been founded over 500 years before the time of Abraham. Now, when you think about those cities, we need to understand that they are very much like the cities that we live in today. They were big population centers. There was a lot going on there. Ur could be compared to a, a modern New York, amen? It had libraries, it had schools, it had uh, laws, legal systems, and it was a very rich city, amen? So that is where Abraham grew up. He grew up in a very cosmopolitan, very affluent, very uh, 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 advanced city for the time. Now, Abraham's father was a guy named Terah. And Joshua chapter 24 verse 2 tells us that Terah was an idol worshiper. Amen? But he not only worshipped idols. Jewish tradition tells us that Terah was also an idol maker. I'm going somewhere with this. Abraham's father was an idol maker. So think about the way Abraham grew up. Amen. He grew up in a home that was filled with idols, that was committed to idol worship, that was all about idols. They made their living from the creation of idols. And this was happening in a town that was, yes, very cosmopolitan, very affluent, but it was known for being the center of idol worship. Amen? They worship the God of fire. They worship the God of the moon, the God of the sun, and the God of the stars. Now, the main idol in the town where Abraham grew up was an idol by the name of Sin. Amen? Sin had a wife called Ningal. Now, the terrible thing about Ningal was that every female in the city, at some point in her life, had to take her turn serving in the temple as a temple prostitute, right? That is how they worship those idols. So look at Abraham. His father worshiped idols. He lived in a city that was the center of idol worship. He was not raised in the most spiritual environment. He was not raised in the most godly environment. Yet when God called Abraham, he believed God. And by faith, he followed God. Amen? Amen. Very much like our, our context now. If you look at the world that we live in today, you will say that our world is not very godly. Amen? Amen? Our world is full of idolatry in so many different manifestations and in so many different ways. But yet in this time, in this environment, there are people who hear the voice of God and still follow that voice in spite of the prevailing circumstances, in spite of the environment, in spite of all the rubbish and the nonsense going on around him, Abraham was able to see God and hear his voice. <laughs> you know, I, I, we've been talking about hearing the voice of God. And I know that sometimes hearing the voice of God can be hard because our environment is very hostile to God and the things of God. And, and for so many of us, you know, that is an acceptable excuse to not have to follow God, to not have to pursue or do the things of God because our environment does not exactly encourage us. Yeah, You're on social media and even when they are saying godly things, they wrap it and attach it with things that distract you from God. And a lot of what is being said is not godly. It's the exact opposite of godly. Yeah, the Bible says, they that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's a lot of stuff online that is far from the spirit of God and is definitely dishonest. There are a lot of people who call themselves Christians, who are not really Christians. And let me be clear, a Christian is not somebody who goes to church. 
A Christian is somebody who is, who is committed to being conformed to the image of Christ. And the image of Christ does not need a color. Amen. Amen? The image of Christ does not need to speak in a certain language. Yeah? The image of Christ does not need to uh, look a certain way. The image of Christ simply is somebody who is committed to letting the world see the light of Christ through their lives. And what is the light of Christ? It is the love that caused God to send Christ to die for us. So somebody who is committed to, to, to being a, a, a living, walking manifestation of Christ is somebody who is committed to displaying, to demonstrating, to exemplifying, speaking only the love of God. So if somebody is on social media telling you things that sound good, but if you check the spirit behind it, it is not love, it is hate. Amen? It is not love, it is hate. And they, they, they couch this hate. They couch this intolerance with religion. You know, do you know what they sound like? They sound like Pharisees. You know, Pharisees in, in nice clothes. Oh, oh, by the way, Jesus Christ called them white church sepulchers. They look good on the outside, but inside they are full of dead men's bones. Amen? They, 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 they hide hatred. They hide hatred behind religion. And, and one area where you will see them a lot is in the political arena. Amen? Amen. It's in the political... Let, let me tell you something about politics. Yeah? When Jesus Christ came to the earth, he was offered... Let me not say offered. He was pressured to take on a political appointment. They wanted him to be king. They wanted to make him king. He had the power to be king. But you know what? He refused. He said, my kingdom is not earthly. It's not of this world. All of those folks who are trying to establish an earthly kingdom have missed the point of Christ. The, the world and the governments of the world have been judged. The world is like a sinking ship. Our job is to get people off the boat. You are not going to fix the world. Let me just tell you now, whoever you are, you are not going to fix the world. You can fix the heart of people. And you don't fix it with hatred and vilification. You fix it with love. You know what Jesus Christ said? He says, I have not come to condemn the world. I have come to save it. So when you read something, ask yourself what is behind what you are reading. Is it hatred? Is it prejudice? Is it biased? Is it racist? Doesn't matter what the person calls themselves. Doesn't matter what title they carry. Doesn't matter what church they attend. Doesn't matter what the praise and worship is like at their church. What matters is the spirit that is speaking through them. And if that spirit is not love, then it is not of God. I don't care how it sounds. I don't care how many followers they have. I don't care how many people are in their service. If it is not of... Uh, let me preach my sermon. Hebrews 11, 8 to 12 states, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful, who had made the promise. You know, when I read this verse, I... I wonder how Abraham knew God. He grew up in a home full of idols. He grew up in a city that was all about idols. How did he know God? Because God was not one of the idols that his father worshipped. Where did he hear of God? How, how did he know that he could trust God? In the midst of all the mess, in the midst of all the rubbish, all the nonsense, how did Abraham know that there was a God whose voice he could follow? Let, let me show you something really quick. Psalm 19 verse 1 through to verse 4. 
It says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. Who is speaking and who is making him known? Who is speaking and who is making him known? The Bible says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, the heavens and the sky, they are speaking. Night after night, the heavens and the sky, they are speaking. Now, they speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard, yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. Nature is speaking to us about God. The heavens are speaking to us about, you know, I love the congregation that I, 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 I pastor. When, when I love the way you guys take your vacations seriously. You guys don't play with vacations. In the summer, oh my God, they are in Cancun, they are in uh, 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 Portugal, they are in Greece, they are in Hawaii, they are in Aruba, they are in the Philippines, they are in Bangladesh, they are in Singapore, they are in Bora Bora, they are in Dubai, they are in Africa, they are in, they are everywhere. They are everywhere. Yeah? And what compels this? Oh, pastor, it's so beautiful there. Have you been to Aruba? Oh my God, the water is, 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 is so clear, it's like glass. Crisp. <laughs> huh? Pastor, have you been to, to Portugal? Oh my God, have you been to Santorini? It's so beautiful there, the, the, the architecture, this and that and this and that. You know, somebody told me they went to one of the uh, national parks and, and the sky was so big. All of these things, all of these things, they are speaking. Nature that we look at and we talk about how, oh my God, the water is crisp, it is clear, it is speaking. You, 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 you wake up in the morning, and this is one of the pictures, everybody takes this picture. They sit in their hotel room and they take pictures of the sunrise. <laughs> Does everybody know what I'm talking about? You've taken those pictures. If you do a census of all the social media pages, there's always a sunrise picture, a sunset picture. There you go. But you know what? These pictures, with all of their beauty, all of their aesthetic appeal, they are speaking. They are speaking. The Bible says, day after day, that ocean is speaking. Night after night, the sunset is speaking. The first thing you see in the morning, the sunrise, it is saying something to you. Even though you do not hear a sound, even though you do not hear a word, there is a message that is being spoken to you. The heavens are telling us a story. They are declaring the glory of the Lord. They are displaying his craftsmanship. Every day, every night, they are speaking, revealing to us the knowledge of God. They do not have a physical voice. If the ocean is speaking to you, you have a problem. You say, Pastor, the water is talking to me. <laughs> I know one ministry where they can help you. If the water is speaking to you and it is not saying Jesus, if the water is saying, come, come, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 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 that one is, 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 is uh, uh, I, I know a guy who can, who can help you out. Hallelujah. You know what the psalmist is saying is that even though they do not have a physical voice, their very existence and nature are speaking. Even though they do not have a voice, there is no corner of this earth. There is no part of this earth that does not get their message. There is no part of this earth that does not... You know, I, I grew up in, in, in Lagos. Lagos uh, is, a, is a, a city on the west coast of Africa. And, and Lagos is a very 
Um, very challenging place to live. Very, very challenging, amen? But man, sometimes, if you, if you are not rushing to avoid traffic, if you wake up in the morning in Lagos, right, and you look up into the sky, the sunrise in Lagos, the sunrise in Lagos can be so beautiful. But guess what? Have any of you who lived in Lagos? You know, as I talked about the sunrise, as I talked about the sunrise in Lagos, those people who grew up in Lagos, are looking at the sunrise? Like, 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 Pastor, does the sun rise in Lagos? But you know, but you know, but isn't that interesting, right? That is how people miss the voice of God. We're so preoccupied. Kitty, kitty, kita, kita, kita. You don't hear it. You don't hear it. You can be in Dallas and not see how beautiful Dallas is. You know, uh, I, so my, we, we moved into a townhouse. We have a patio on the roof. So in the evenings, we would, you know, we would go and we would sit on the patio, my wife and I, and, and the breeze, you know, is, is blowing. Tosin said to me one day, he said, PF, do you ever look out from your roof? Because I can see the church from my patio. He said, do you ever look at the church from your roof with all the lights on and see how beautiful the work of God is? I said, yeah. She said, yeah, that, can't you see it? Don't you, don't you bless God for what he has done in your life? I, I, I was embarrassed. Because when I'm on that roof, <laughs> I'm not looking at anything. And that is how we go through life. You know, in those days, people did not have GPS systems. They had to look at the stars for direction. They had to look at the stars to tell the seasons. They had to read the stars to predict the storm. They actually had to study the stars. Now, these days, we have, we have GPS and, and we have, you know, AccuWeather and, and all of those apps. So we are constantly looking down. We never look up. And because we are looking down, all that is stirred up in us is not faith. It is many times fear and discontentment and anxiety because we're constantly looking down. We don't look up and hear the voice of God. You know, Abraham, all Abraham had was nature. And through nature, he heard God. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says, it says, for ever since the world was created, People have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see what? His invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. That means that through everything that we see, through all of nature, yeah, we can see his invisible qualities. We can see the nature and the character of God. That's why Jesus Christ said, look at the, the plants, the, the lily of the valleys, the, 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 the birds in the air. And he says, when you look at those things, it tells you something about God. It shows you the provision of God. It shows you God's attention to little details. It says, if a flower can be more beautiful than Solomon with all his money, then how much more you? And, and we don't hear God. I, I can't hear the voice of God. You're not listening. Or rather, you're not looking. You know, when we think about the glory of God, sometimes we think about, you know, about, about light. You know, just a beam of light flashing somewhere like a UFO. You know, or, or, or just smoke. You know, like a smoke machine. That's why we use the smoke machine to make you feel like the glory of the Lord is here. <laughs> I, BK, I've told them the truth now. You can... You can. You can, you can switch off the smoke machine. But, but, but you, know, you know that's what we think, right? When you hear the glory of God. Ah, the glory of God was strong in that place. There was a lot of smoke. The smoke machine was working well that day. 
But the glory of the Lord is more than smoke and light. That is the Shekinah glory of God. His glory is more than smoke and light. His glory is all that he is and all that he has. His glory is Christ, a revelation. The Bible says the express image of his person. So through nature, we are seeing the invisible attributes of God. The glory that the Lord is speaking of is everything that he is. We can see all of God. So basically, the heavens are telling us that everything that God puts his hand on to make is great. Amen? Abraham, like everyone else all over the world, looked at the skies. And he, he, he saw some things in the sky that made him trust a God that he did not know. A God he did not grow up with. The Bible says he saw God's eternal power and divine nature. When you look at the sun, have you noticed how consistent the sun is? Have you noticed? The sun is so consistent that we set our clocks according to the sun. The clocks, the watches that we wear on our hands now derive their sequence from the sun. Amen? Watches started originally as sundials, right? People told time, or time was broken up into segments based on the location of the sun in the sky. The shadows that the sun created is what people then started to call time. Amen? The sun is so consistent. Wherever it is, you, wherever it is you are in the world, the sun always rises in the east and always sets in the west. I know there are parts of the, of the world that don't get any sunlight a lot of the time. But when they get it, it rises where? In the east. And it sets in the west. The rising of the sun is so consistent, you can count on it. Travelers were able to chart their course by it. But guess what? That consistency is a reflection of what? Of the creator. Our God is a consistent God. Like the sun, he is constant. No matter what happens, the sun will rise. And he will, it will rise where? On the east. And it will set where? On the west. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23, it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. You know, not all for faithful, consistent. It's consistent. Amen? The New Living Translation says, let us hold tightly. Don't you ever say tightly? Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. You know where Abraham got that from? From the sun. The God who made this sun is a consistent God. He is a faithful God. He keeps his word. When I go to sleep at night, I can count on it that the sun will rise tomorrow. That is how you can count on God. If this God could cause the sun to rise and set in the same place, then he must be a faithful God. God is faithful. God is dependable. God is reliable. You can take it to the bank. You can bet on him. If he has promised, he will bring it to pass. So those of us right now who are in a place of, of doubt, of anxiety, of fear, just look up. When you look up, you hear what you need to hear. You see the God who has called you, who has promised you. You see that he is consistent. You know, I know that many times when we talk about the consistency of God and the faithfulness of God, some of us struggle because, you know, we use ourselves or human beings as a template to understand God. It's almost like we have to humanize him, yeah, in order to appreciate him or understand him. And that is why the Bible warns us explicitly that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. He doesn't operate the way we operate. He doesn't move like we move. Amen? Men make promises and they don't keep it. Sometimes they never meant to keep it. Sometimes they are unable to keep it. And if you have been on this planet long enough, you've learned. You've learned that, you know, 
The fact that somebody says they will do something doesn't mean they will do it. And some of us transfer that to God. Yeah? We always want corroborating evidence. Prove to me that you will do what you have promised. Prove to me that you can keep your word, that you will keep your word. We're constantly looking for proof. That is why we're always saying to God, eh, that thing you said, can you repeat it? But the Bible says, once have I spoken. Twice we have heard. God is not a chatterbox. We need a chatterbox because we do not trust. Do you know how many times God spoke to Abraham? Wild guess. How many times? Whoever gets it right, I'll give you a prize. Huh? Sorry? No, no. Yes, ma'am. Three times. No. Who said seven? You get the prize. God spoke to Abraham over a span of 30 years. 30 years. Only seven times. Oh, my God. Talk about the strong, silent type. <laughs> Only seven times, my brothers and sisters, Pentecostals would have lost their minds. God, God has to speak to us every day. Speak to you in the morning, speak to you in the afternoon, speak to you at night, speak to you. <laughs> about what? Exactly what God keep talking about. So we, we live in this state of constant insecurity in relationship with, with God because we try and humanize him. My wife likes to talk. I'm sorry, you do. She, she talks too much. I, you see, I'm in trouble today. All the women in my life Please, uh, if you have a couch I can sleep on, I'll be standing outside after the service. But, 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 but jokes apart, right? We, we, when we talk about a relationship with God, we think about it about uh, like a human relationship, where God is, you know, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Will you do that thing you promised? Are you going to take out the trash? Are you going to take out the trash? God spoke to Abraham, the father of faith, seven times in 30 years. Now, I know I need to talk to my wife, and I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm, I'm, am I not getting better? I'm getting better. But you see, God spoke to Abraham seven times. But yet, Abraham left everything he had and followed this God. Because you know what? When Abraham needed reassurance from God, he looked up, said, the God who made the heavens and the earth, he will fulfill his promises to me. We, we don't look up. We don't look up. We speed dial the nearest prophet. Who also is not looking up? Or you call Pastor and Pastor, what's the Lord saying? Look up. Everything you need to know about God, everything God, just look up. The reassurance that you need, look up. You will see God. He's around you. The promises he has made to you. We, we are constantly looking for reassurance. And he is reassuring us. But like Samuel, it's just nature, it's just mother nature. It's just mother nature. Samuel went to Eli. God was talking to him, went to Eli. He thought it was Eli talking to him, so he did not receive it as from God. God is speaking to us and we say it's nature. So we don't hear the message. Oh, this place is so beautiful. That's not the point. There's a message in that beauty. And if you don't see the message, then the beauty is wasted. Oh, this place is, is so peaceful and so tranquil. There's a message in that tranquility. Numbers 23 verse 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Has he spoken 
and shall he not make it good? The faithfulness of God is as reliable as the rising of the sun and the setting of the same. In James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And then in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, it says, I am the Lord. I do not change. That is why you can trust him. That is why Abraham trusted him and left his father's house and left his comfort zone for a place that he did not know because he judged him to be faithful who had promised. I don't know what God has promised you. If he has promised you, he will do it. Not because you are perfect, but because that is who he is. You know, the sun does not shine because you are good. The sun shines because that is what the sun does. And all of that, Abraham looked at it and he heard that. He deduced from nature, from the stars, from the sky, from the moon, from the, from the rivers, from the oceans, from the crisp lagoon. He deduced that the God who has called him is able and is faithful. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Let us bow our heads and pray. And so, Father, we, we thank you and we bless you. Indeed, you are a, a faithful God. You are a merciful God, a gracious God. We thank you, Father, because even when we are unfaithful, you are faithful. We thank you because you are constantly speaking to us without a sound. You are passing on a message to us. Father, help us to hear the voice. Help us to hear your voice. That, Father, faith may rise in our hearts. And that faith be counted unto us, accounted unto us as righteousness. We thank you, Father. We bless you and we give you praise. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise this morning. If the Lord is worthy of praise, let us give him praise. Amen.